everyone please rise.
Instruments, and four, your community college. Family Code Community College strives to place the importance on the word community because without you, the community, it could not exist. So thank you for making a special effort to come this evening and for your support. As you know, this is not just any Friday night in May. This is a special night. We're here to honor the 2023 graduating class. So graduates, you did it. You're here this evening with your family, spouses, children, parents, friends and community college faculty, board of trustees of the college, special guests from your community, and your colleagues to celebrate a major accomplishment. You had to face many challenges to reach this goal. You agree with that? Many challenges, yes. There were challenges, forms to be completed, meetings with advisors, tests, schedules, financial obligations, and some of you were completing high school while working on your college degree. In fact, I believe six of you were. And others were working and taking care of families while trying to study. And the list goes on and on. However, you persevere all these challenges. You realized the importance of furthering your education in order to attain and to maintain better job opportunities. So tonight, we celebrate your commencement exercise, a beginning of something new, a gradual moving forward, a college graduation. So, give yourself a pat on the back, give your loved ones a great big hug, and thank them for their support, and celebrate. Eleanor Roosevelt said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I'll repeat, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. You believe. And tonight, you will realize your dream by graduating from Pamela Cove Community College. Again, thank you all for coming and expressing your support for our 2023 Pamela Community College graduates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. What a great night the Lord has given us. What a beautiful night. And you know what? It's in honor of you. You did it. You did it, didn't you? You did it. What a great group of graduates. We've gotten to know you and seen the uh, challenges that you've had, as all people have, and the perseverance that you've had, and the dedication that you've shown, and your commitment to success. So tonight is a night of celebration for you, and to say thank you for what you've done. As after tonight, you go out, and you are graduates of Pamlico Community College, and you go on, into either go to the university or go to um, the workplace. And you know what? We are so proud of you. We're so proud of you. Many of you have children. Many of you have jobs. Many of you have uh, been in high school while you're taking our classes. And you've worked so hard. And we've all seen you. And we've all worked with you step by step. So, let me tell you what's going to happen tonight. Uh, we'll have the, uh, uh, the, uh, the ceremony. And then in order to uh, allow you to be honored fully tonight, as you come up and get your diploma, we'll have a photographer uh, take our, our photograph. 
Uh, the only bad part for you, I'll be in the photograph as well. So. Uh, throw it away for now, just kidding. We also, and that'll be, that'll be something we'll send to you next week. Uh, we'll email that to you, and then you can forward it to all of your family members and loved ones. We also will have a video of this ceremony, so you're able to do the same thing. And no charge for you for that. In addition, as you leave tonight, you and your family members are invited to get a professional family portrait. And it's going to be right across the hall. And this is digital, and it's really high quality. And uh, you'll be able to take this and treasure this for years to come. And what we found in doing this in the past, many families have never had a family portrait. So no matter how many family members you have with you, please uh, take advantage of this. Get the, uh, the family portrait to, to make sure that you remember this forever. At this point, I would like you all to stand so we can give you a big round of applause. All of our graduates, congratulations. <laughs> Getting a chance to, to talk with you uh, tonight and throughout uh, this period of time and asking you what your highlight has been in your education Typically, it's um, that you have learned. You have learned. And uh, you've learned by very dedicated faculty, and uh, you have succeeded also because of very dedicated staff. And when I've asked you what uh, your challenge was, it comes up that, uh, you know, how do you, how do you juggle everything today? I mean, none of us have enough time. And how do you juggle having children, having a job, going to school? How do you do it? Well, you do it because you are dedicated to success. One thing that our college is very, very proud of is that uh, we emphasize excellence. And we've won a number of uh, national awards for that. And the importance of that is it indicates that we are serving you and serving you well. You need to have the excellence right here in the classroom and faculty members stretching your capabilities. So when you go out to the workplace, you're going to do a great job. You're going to have a great, great career. And that's happened here. So I want to, at this point, ask all of the family members of any of the graduates to please rise so that we can give you a big round of applause. In speaking with you graduates, one of the secrets of success that you always mention is the fact that you have loving family members who've been there for you. Many of you probably thought of giving up along the way. You thought that this was too tough, you couldn't do it. And you had family members who sit down with you and loved you and told you, you know what, you can do it. Many of you have had financial challenges and thought that you had to drop out because of that, and you've had family members who've stepped up to the plate and helped you along the way. Many of you came in not knowing whether you could succeed in college. With that, your family members stepped in and reassured you and helped you step by step. But they're real heroes. You know, Pamlico County is a really special place. I've been here seven years, and my wife and I love it. The people here are some of the finest people in the whole world. And living here in Pamlico County, you are reminded of what has made our nation great every step away. And that's faith, that's family, and that's a commitment to service to your fellow human beings. And the belief in our country that you can achieve anything that you want to if you're willing to work hard enough for it. And you've shown that that is possible. I'd also like to ask each faculty and staff member of our college
to please stand for a big round of applause. We have been very humbled to receive national recognition as the number one community college in America among all community colleges in student success. And that uh, is a case right now where we're recognized by Wallet Hub. Wallet Hub does the rankings of uh, uh, various uh, different uh, uh, organizations across our nation. And uh, they uh, analyzed all of the community colleges in America. And there are hundreds of outstanding community colleges in this nation. And they analyzed federal data that we're all required to give. And they were the ones that determined that looking at the criteria of student educational outcomes, graduation rates, first year success rates, persistence, um, faculty student ratio in the classroom, uh, percent of faculty members who are full-time uh, versus part-time, on and on and on. And using the criteria uh, that they had, we are ranked number one in the nation. And this is the second time in three years. And the credit for that um, is shared. Our employees have had a commitment to make their lives mean something by helping your lives. And whenever I'm asked about the awards that we got, two years ago we were ranked number two in the nation overall as a community college by Smart Asset. Whenever I'm asked about this, I always say it's because of the heart that our employees have. And that heart allows them, when they're exhausted, to still work with you. It allows not only our faculty members to be patient with you and encourage you to excel and to persist, but it also extends to our staff members who are asked to, to help with everything from applications for scholarships uh, to help your computers, and, um, and they, never, they never seemingly get tired of it. So whenever we're asked about this, I believe the answer is the heart that our employees have to help you. And whenever you look at it more than that, and in terms of giving thanks, and we thank you for your efforts, we thank our employees for their efforts, and we thank family members for their efforts, and community members as well. We do need to say thank you to someone else. Uh, we need to say thank you to God. God is with us. God is with each one of you. God's with everyone here who has contributed to tonight. God has been in my life and helping me overcome challenges, as he does with, with each of you. So we remember him for allowing us to have this success. We thank him also for providing blessings for the bold and noble goals we have for the future to allow future classes to succeed as well. I'd like to, uh, at this I'd like to recognize uh, some individuals who are uniquely uh, supportive of our college. We could recognize everyone here. In the interest of time, though, there, there are certain ones we do want to, uh, to recognize. First of all, I, I want to say that among the, the greatest blessings of my seven years here has been uh, working with Senator Norman Sanderson. Uh, Senator Sanderson, uh, the first week I was here, it was a Saturday, and there was a 50th anniversary of the Rescue Squad. And I met Senator Sanderson, his wife Linda, uh, daughter Jennifer, and a family. And uh, it was a remarkable meeting. 
And during that meeting, he and I, by the time we were finished talking, vowed that we would work together using our, our positions. He is a state senator, me as a college president, to do something noble and bold to help Pamlico County. And in the seven years, I mean, uh, I have tired him out so much by, uh, <laughs> by pursuing these bold and noble goals, and he has never said no. And uh, for example, uh, just uh, this, this, this past Christmas, and this is very part of the course, uh, we were pursuing getting funding from the state for, for a building that would really help uh, make lives better. And right before Christmas, he gave up an entire day to drive with me out to Raleigh and lend his weight to a cabinet secretary to, uh, to seek these funds. And uh, so, Senator Sanderson, would you please uh, rise uh, so we could give you a, a round of applause for putting up with all of my calls and, and uh, messages and visits and all of this. And please rise. Not only have you been an extraordinary senator working uh, with us, but, but an extraordinary friend. Uh, when my, my son uh, became ill, uh, Senator Sanderson was the first person I talked to about it. He and Linda and the family prayed down with my wife and I continuously. I deeply appreciate that. Uh, his wife Linda is here. Linda, would you, would you rise for a moment? I want to mention something about you. Linda. Uh, When uh, I sat down with the Senator and Linda in my office about two weeks after we first met, and uh, I asked them, what can we do to make our service to the community better? And Senator Sanderson had some excellent ideas, of course, and Linda did. And uh, Linda told me, she said, I want you just to look into one thing. I said, what is that? And she said, well, I'd like you to look into allowing the community to use this beautiful Delamar Center. I said, well, why are they using it? And she said, well, you charge him six, seven, eight hundred dollars an event, and nobody can afford it. So I said, I, I would look into it. So we did look into it, and uh, found that uh, I did have the authority to, to waive fees for individual groups that might ask to use this facility. I said, well, okay, if I have uh, that kind of authority, I can have the authority to waive it for all nonprofit groups, and that's what we did. Um, after looking into about for about three months and figuring this thing would actually work, we uh, we did that, and uh, so we started a policy uh, six years ago, where any nonprofit in Pamlico County can use this beautiful facility and not pay a penny, and it's because Linda brought that up uh, that particular day. We are very blessed to have. Representative Keith Kidwell as our state representative uh, now. He just uh, became our state representative in uh, January. I was at his inauguration uh, with he and Senator Sanderson. And uh, uh, since then, he has already shown how gracious he is in allowing me to come out twice <laughs> and spend about an hour with him and uh, asking for things for our college. And uh, uh, I know that we have someone here who's going to champion uh, for the same types of things that Senator Sanderson has to make our community college even better, make our community even better. Representative, would you be kind enough to, to, to rise, please, for a round of applause? And uh, Representative Kidwell is with his wife, Vicki. Vicki, would you be kind enough to rise, please? We look forward to working with you. One thing that, that we are doing, and I need to, to mention this to the students, as you go out into your careers, uh, what we want to emphasize to you and your parents is that it is just as honorable to have a career that you work with your hands, just as honorable as careers in which you don't. And uh, in the past several years, we have added uh, 20 new um, skills-based uh, workforce development programs for our community. 
and 20 allied health programs. We're planning to add even more. And so it's wonderful to pursue the careers in which you become a doctor, attorney, CPA, etc. But it's just as honorable to be a welder, to be a plumber, to be an electrician. And our society needs both. And that's one of the things that we're, we're working with, both the representative and the senator now, to, to get funding so that we can have a facility in which we double the number of our workforce development programs and our allied health programs. So each of you, get ready, I'll be calling you again. Thank you. We also have with us, uh, from our uh, Board of Trustees, our Board of Trustees volunteers who uh, do a great job, and we have us with us in the audience, uh, Iris Hudson. Iris, stand please. Thank you, Iris. And we have Candy Boomer on our, on our stage right here. Candy Boomer. And of course you've met Dan Holt. With our Foundation Board of Directors, we have Carla Burns, our Vice President, right here. We have Earl Canfield. Earl? Earl? We have Michelle Montgomery. We have Sherry Reto. And we have Ann Whitman. So thank you for being here. We have our famous County Manager, Tim Buck, right there in the front row, Tim. Tim, uh, Tim is great to work with, and we work very closely together at all times, and uh, especially during the hurricane season, uh, uh, we uh, work very closely to make sure our community is protected. This is, uh, our, our college is the uh, emergency shelter for our community, and Tim just does a great job in every way, as does the county staff. Uh, and uh, you, you met uh, Candy a few minutes ago. Candy, in addition to board members, also a county commissioner, so you get two rounds of applause. We have the superintendent of public schools, Lisa Jackson. Lisa, what's this rumor about you retiring? Lisa has been such a friend of our college. Uh, uh, she's uh, devoted more than 30 years of her life in, uh, in uh, education. Six of those years were right here at our college as a department chair. And uh, we've had an outstanding relationship uh, with your superintendent, which has paid off dividends for our students with the cooperative programs that we've had. So uh, keep in touch and uh, thank you for everything. Okay, we also have from the Board of Education, we have Kathy Dunbar. Kathy. We have Jamie Gibbs. We have Eric Smith. And among our mayors, we have someone very close to us, Sally Valangia from Oriana. Sally. And Sally's daughter, Caitlin, is graduating uh, from the cosmetology program tonight. And I'll, actually, if I can go back to, uh, you know, there are always bets taken as far as how many times I'm going to mess up. And uh, so it's often in the 20s, so anybody who predicted less than that, you're probably going to lose. But anyway, I forgot to mention, when I mentioned uh, Senator Sanderson's wife, Linda, um, that we have Sanderson's grandson, Joel, uh, here tonight who's receiving a certificate of completion of his career in College Promise Pathway, and he is a son of, uh, of Jennifer and, uh, and uh, Mr. Elcock. So uh, we, uh, we appreciate uh, the uh, whole, whole family. And uh, we have uh, Bob Fuller, who is the chair of the Pimlico Chamber of Commerce Board. Uh, Bob is a great guy, fascinating guy, and we've come very close. I served on a committee he had, a, a kind of a dream team, looking at some things we could do for the county. And uh, Bob, please rise. Okay, we also have a legend in local media here, 
and that is Jeff Idlet and Flora Mormon from the County Compass. Please rise. <laughs> Jeff's a great friend, and uh, the first day I came uh, to the college, I devoted uh, uh, much of the uh, day to going out and visiting the media that we'd be working with, and uh, I spent about uh, two and a half hours with Jeff that day, and uh, we've been uh, very close friends since, and with a very, very positive uh, relationship, and I uh, appreciate Dell. Uh, now, many of you might have seen the, uh, the ad cam campaign that we had with uh, Elvis, and uh, uh, statements that if our enrollment went up, uh, uh, at some point, I was going to try to get anyone from the community I could get to uh, perform Elvis songs with me. So, uh, I called him today to let him know it would not be today. And I'm putting it off as long as I can. So, uh, Jeff, it'll happen. I'll keep my word. <laughs> but, but not tonight. Uh, so, with that, uh, I have the great honor of uh, introducing our commencement speaker. And uh, that is... Uh, Candy Bummer, and uh, Candy is the chair, is the vice chair of the Pamlico County Board of Commissioners. Uh, she is uh, a member of our uh, Community College Board of Trustees, born and raised in Northern Virginia, has called Pamlico County her home since 1992, and you can read all about her in here, but what I want to say about her, she is a true, dedicated Pamlico County servant. She is involved in everything you can imagine, and she is a great, great credit to our college, and she's a graduate of our college, and one of the great honors I have is selecting people to be commencement speaker. And I always look at um, what they will be able to share with you as far as tips for success in life. And Candy has gone through some challenges, and uh, as we all do, and she's overcome them. And she has a positive uh, view of life, an optimistic view of life. And I know you're going to uh, gain from her. When I called and asked her if she'd be the speaker, I was thrilled that she said yes. So please let me introduce Candy. Good evening. Group you guys are. I'm very excited and very honored to talk to you all tonight. As Dr. Ross said, I graduated from the first class of environmental science technologies way back when the dinosaurs roamed. Um, I noticed that some of you all are a little older and some of you all are very much younger. When I graduated, I was 40. You're not done yet. And I wanted to start off by saying something that's very important to me. Because it tells you where I stand, what I believe, and a little bit about who I am. Jesus is king in my life. And if it wasn't for him, I would not be here. I would not have traveled the path. And it seems like it wasn't all that long ago when I was sitting in your chair. And I was looking at the commencement speaker going, oh my God, when is this going to be over? <laughs> at that time, my name was Candy Kane. Isn't it wonderful what parents do to children? <laughs> but it is an honor to be here. And it's really, really fun to see the people in the audience that I know and those of you that I don't. It's been quite a journey from the time I graduated. It took me six years to be able to use my, um, my, sorry, nerves, um, to be able to use my diploma in the field that I had chosen, which was in environmental science. And what I did was, there was an opportunity to, to, um, to apply for a job with the Pamlico Soil and Water Conservation District. Well, it was something that I had no idea was the job that I always wanted that I didn't imagine that actually existed. And I almost passed it up. 
after six years, I'd become kind of discouraged and kind of like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'd had some, some death in the family. I'd had some other challenges. And I was like, I'm done. My husband said, you need to go do it. And I said, yeah, and you were the one that told me you wanted me to run for town council, too. Thanks. But I applied, and I got the job. And for 20 years, I've lived my dream. I got to work in agriculture. I got to help with um, farmers putting best management practices on the ground. I got to meet people. And the one thing that I didn't realize is that it became a very good um, pathway into government. Because that's really what it's all about as far as environmental stuff goes. The problem with the environmental field is that it's full of lies and deceptions and you have to be able to know what's going on. And I don't think many of the other fields are far behind. However, you guys get to take that challenge on. You're going to have so much fun. <clears throat> when I was sitting in the audience, Back in the day, I never imagined that I would be speaking to a group this large, biggest one yet, and that I would be speaking to you as a county commissioner and as a board of trustees. That never entered into my wheelhouse. Politics was the last thing I wanted to be a part of, and mmm. Board of Trustees to the college, what is that? Don't despise your small beginnings. Every step you take, every opportunity you grab is going to lead you somewhere and the worst that can happen is somebody says no. You're going to learn so much. Be open to how many things are going on. Be open to the people who are going to take an interest in you, especially those of you who are walking in your dream, because you're going to be the ones that are going to be focused on the ambition, and people love to feed that. They love to see that. They want you to be the best you can be and surround yourself with those people, the ones who lift you up, the ones who give you wings to fly, that's who you want to hang out with. If somebody says, man, you can't do that, walk away. Say thank you very much and walk away. So for your future, and we do have a future, and while the things right now out in the world look kind of, oh, ugly, it's okay. Because I've lived through some ugly myself. When I was a teenager, I grew up in Northern Virginia, and the ugly was happening in Washington, D.C., with the riots, and the burning, and the marches, and all those things that happened back in the late 60s and early 70s. I was very young, and I got to watch it all. So I know that while things look bleak sometimes, they change. And I know that young people and the people who have an education, who have stated their purpose, and who have decided that this is what I'm going to do with my life, are the ones who end up leading. It's not about cracking a whip. Leadership is all about influence. Who you influence and who influences you. Who you can talk to and who you can't. The hope is that the future will be better than the present. And we have the power to make it so. You guys have taken on that first grab of power. You can change things. It takes little steps, like I said, don't despise a small beginning. When you believe that you can make a difference, that is how you move forward and move forward with others. Don't limit yourself by saying, I can't.
Don't limit yourself by believing a lie that you're not capable or you're not worthy. And you've proven by a shadow of doubt that you are overcomers. And you get to claim your prize tonight, and I'm not going to stand in your way any longer. Congratulations. Thank you all for taking on the, the two-year school that you have taken on, making Pamlico proud of you. And we're all very proud to know you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Father figure. 
He's done wonders with the program he teaches ever since he took it over several years ago. He has steadily grown his program through hard work and lifelong connection to the community. As an instructor, he's very hands-on with his students. He passes along first-hand knowledge and first-hand experience. He's also a strong team player within that division here at PCC. He does his job well and is not afraid to ask questions in order to better his abilities as an instructor and academic advisor. Being able to ask, ask questions is a very important thing. My granddaughter, who's a doctor in California and just finished her first years of profession, was told one of the things that made her so excellent that she wasn't afraid to ask. So to the question of what kind of an impact did PCC have on the candidate, the nominator wrote, he took his knowledge of electrical systems technology and chose to return to PCC as the head of the very program he graduated from years earlier. A true success story to me. Grad comes back to lead. Student becomes teacher. To the question of how will this individual story reflect positively on PCC, he's a prime example of the quality students our programs produce. We educate people to go out into the workforce and to make a difference. This candidate obviously felt strongly about the impact PCC had on him. He chose to return and work here in order to give new students the same experience he'd had here, if not better. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you the 2023-24 Pamlico Community College Alumnus of the Year Electrical Systems Technology Program Instructor, Larry Monk. community service and personal and professional accomplishments, striving to make this, commu this community a better place to live, and tirelessly sharing the wisdom and experience to others. Because of these qualities, Larry exemplifies the goals and objectives of the Pamela Community College. And we are honored to name him Alumnus of the Year. And Larry, we have a little surprise for you. I believe your wife, Dana, is here. Social in Arts, Cindy Barker.
Brianna Thomas. Joshua Tillman Honors. <laughs> the Associate in Science degree, Maria E. Herrera. Vincent Pater Paterno, honors. Kiara <laughs> Sawyer. Associate in Applied Science, Taylor M. Bateman, Criminal Justice Technology. Jason Butts, Honor, Environmental and Technology. Ginger A. Flowers. Gwendolyn Hart, Criminal Justice Technology. You look beautiful. <laughs> Caitlin Hine, Environmental Science Technology. and Finance Business Administration. Kobe Wright, Environmental Science Technology, Environmental Management Technology. Good job, baby. Diploma Program. Tiara Barrett. Emma Ingram, Honors Cosmetology.
Gus Lopez, Lopez Garcia, Administration, Jessica Peden, Aesthetics Technology, Honors. Jaquana Pickett, Honors, Aesthetics Technology. Smith, Woo! honors, cosmetology. 
great start. Honors, CCP Transfer Pathway to Social and Arts. Victoria Thal, Aesthetics Technology.
trustees of the North Carolina Community College System, I hereby confer upon each of you the certificate, diploma, and degree earned. You may turn your tablets.